Hi YouTube. I hope you're doing good. I'm doing okay. Not too bad. Um, you know, lately my heart's been a little sad, but it really isn't anything new. <laughs> so I was listening to a uh, um, ASSC podcast. What if you decide to get revenge on a narcissist? What happens next? And what behaviors to expect. Well, I can tell you from experience that whether or not you even intend to get revenge on them, but just by way of even trying to get away from them, um, just that in itself is enough to um, anger these people, you know, especially if you've heard things like, They'll kill your family members or, you know, whatever. All kinds of crazy stuff that you could um, see and go through because of trying to distance yourself from crazy people that aren't incarcerated and kept in there because they're not mentally handicapped. They're evil, you know. So trying to get away from them type of people. Yeah, you can do it. But don't ever do it and think that you're going to turn your back. I mean, you don't want to be looking over your shoulder for the rest of your life in fear either. I mean, it's not like that. I mean, but then on the other hand, you could think to yourself if you were uh, brutalized when you were in that relationship, then you could think to yourself, well, it would be just another brutal attack, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, I mean, rest easy, but I wouldn't just, um, if you've crossed them, they're going to try and do whatever they can do out of hatred for you, to you. And if that involves your kids, they don't care, whatever it takes. For them to seek revenge on you, they will. I wouldn't suggest even trying to get revenge on these people. If you can walk away and leave it alone, leave it alone. You know, I um, had to have dealings with my ex because of the kids. As soon as the kids were growing, he, he wrote me a letter and I told him, I said, if you write me again, I'm going to report you to the authorities. This is your warning. I wrote him a, and I recorded it, and uh, it's the way it is. So, yeah. And that's all I can do in that area. But that does not stop this person that hates me trying to seek revenge on me through my children and my grandchildren that he could care less about. You don't walk away from your sons. I mean, and I told him, here's a spare room. Just leave me out of your life. You know, that wasn't good enough for him. He wanted everything, you know. So you can't take a person like that and, and expect um, them to act honorable in any way because they won't, you know. I don't know what else I was thinking there. I'm still a little tired. I did switch my room around. Um, not just the lighting is better here, but um, I haven't been sleeping good. Um, I had the head of my bed too close to the window, so I had to switch things around so I can uh, maybe get a better night's sleep. So, And I had made a half-hour video just a little bit ago and I erased it <laughs> before I uploaded it. First YouTube wouldn't come on when I was trying to put the title in there and then I just pushed the wrong button out of tiredness so wish me luck. I think I'll get it this time but yeah that was a little crazy.
then I was thinking, what does it mean really to be humble in life, you know? Well, the me being humble is losing everything multiple times, including your family and your children, and still having the grace of God in your heart towards other people so you don't become a cruel lump of whatever out on this planet. So if we can take what other people have done to us in our lives and still maintain a certain um, dignity about ourselves <laughs> through it all, that's, that's being humble. I'm going to share a song I've been singing in my head. Um, oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble. I can't remember the name of it. I think that's it, but I'm going to look it up and share it. It's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Well, we are made perfectly and wonderfully, so don't, don't, don't go overboard with the song. Just, you know, laugh. Hopefully you'll laugh. <laughs> so that's what it's meant for. So I'm going to share it because it is a little bit humorous. Yeah. So. Still can't believe I just erased the whole thing. It's like, yeah, you don't do enough. You better do another video. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, maybe I said something that shouldn't have been said. I don't think so, though. Most likely it's something I would say again. So. Yeah, I'm just thinking about what it, what it actually is like to distance yourself from people that will do and say anything to get what they want in life. And it doesn't matter who they crucified to do that. It's it, it amazes me still that people will degrade their children or their exes or whoever, you know. I'm not really trying to degrade anybody. It's just the fact of the matter that um and not even so much as clearing my name because I was slandered like talk about crucified you would not believe the stuff that was said about me that was entirely untrue you know that I had sex in my living room in front of my children with Doug I didn't do that with their dad in my living room even when the kids were sleeping not even close you know but things like that and that um and even Doug they said what they say now he killed a cat in front of the kids that wasn't true you know all these things that they actually used in court to paint me as a bad mom you know and they tried to make me do a psychological evaluation but when I broke up with that thing I didn't break up, I kicked him out and uh, got separation, legal separation papers right away. But um, I went to a psychiatrist to have somebody to talk to because I was explosive. I had been around a lot of violence and I felt myself and found myself snapping at my children when I didn't want to. And I needed somebody to talk to that cared about me. And so I had a psychological evaluation. And I um, also was still employed by um, our school system for the state of Minnesota as a paraprofessional working with handicapped children um, as an emotional support counselor for them. So, you know, it wasn't like I was really alien of the concept of finding uh, uh, psychological help when I needed it because it did help me. 
I calmed down. But what really, really kind of turned me off from the whole thing was they wanted to put me on some medication for being depressed. Um, my doctor, too, recommended that. And I just found that there is no pill for depression. I mean, when your heart is sad, there's there's not a pill for it, you know. I mean, you can try and take drugs or whatever, but it isn't. But my um, psychiatrist, she started crying. So that wasn't very good. Then I felt bad for her. It's like, well, look, <laughs> you know, I wanted somebody to feel bad for me for once. And she did almost too much so because the things that she was hearing were so horrendous that she couldn't deal with it. You know, there's a meme. It's like a real frazzled dog. And it's like my emotional support dog after it. Here's my story. That's what this um psychiatrist looked like so in the in the courts when they tried to make me go get this evaluation both parents had to I had already just had one so I go I'm not gonna do that and they were like well you're you know it's like mandatory you have to you know it's like uh, but I just had one you know on my own accord because I was uh, five years raising my children by myself and I wanted to be a good parent and I didn't want to holler at my children the way we were the way I was raised and the way my ex was raised and um, yeah some violent messed up crap on both those sides of the family so I wanted to put an end to all that and I did on my part you know, so. And I knew, too, when I was snapping at my kids, but it was just this one day, and they would always argue, always. It was a constant. It, they never quit. They're both Capricorn. They're both strong-minded, and they'd sit there, and they'd argue and argue. And I just turned around. I was at the sink making them supper, and I just turned around and yelled, Shut the at my kids and they were like um, nine and six so I did apologize to him but then I did go get some help and I thought I, I seriously need somebody to talk to you know and then I put my kids in counseling too because um, they needed it so, and that wasn't the first time I had um, started that with my oldest son when he was six because he was um, struggling. So, yeah, I tried all along. But what really, really, really interfered was they had this state, this woman that came out from the state that was to, like, spend time with the kids and um, she would take them like uh, shopping and my youngest son stole something it was a little class figure and when they got home and I found it I asked him where he got it and I got to the bottom of it and this woman would not reprimand my kid for this she overlooked it and it was like oh not that big of a deal I took my kid into the store and made him pay for it and told the store owner that, yes, if it happens again, we'll have to take more severe measures because, you know, this can't, can't continue. But just that the state woman had overlooked it. And then that same day when I had told her about that, that I don't even want you around my kids if this is what's going to happen when you take them out. And then you don't tell them that it was the wrong thing to do. My son and her were out by, my youngest and her were out by our LP tank. And I heard her say to him that it's okay to swear. 
it's okay to use foul language. She was telling this little person that was in like second grade. I, I yelled out the window, that's enough of you. You get the hell out of my yard. And I called where she worked for her and I and then I called the state and I had her fired. You know, it's like. So I, I always kind of made waves with the state and they got involved. Uh, by, by way of me trying to be a good parent, I got these psych psychologists for children involved with my children through the state and it was a nightmare <laughs> you know um, I had two psychologists fired so by the time I got into the same courthouse and tried to defend myself as far as my parental rights I was looking pretty much like the biggest bitch around my community because I had already written an article in the paper about their sexual ed teacher and um, some of the practices that they were teaching my children that I didn't approve of. And so, and one of the biggest things that I think was um, was the guardian ad litem that they had to look over the whole case that was there in the court on behalf of the children. Didn't even talk to Doug. Not one time. And it was like Doug wasn't even involved in the kid's life in, the, in that whole court procedure as far as they were concerned. And he was a part of the kid's life. And so just leaving him out of the picture like I was just some woman out there that um, couldn't raise her children, you know, and didn't deserve to raise her children. But somebody that could be gone out of their lives can just show back up. That's okay. And he could be a proven thief, a liar, even using the alias, all the shit he did. I could go on and on. And none of it mattered. He beat up a cop for getting his sister pregnant, bashed his head into the headlight. And I even tried to get this person who was... Um, Commissioner, Chief of Police for the state of Montana um, in the capital city to write a statement for me on my behalf of this person's character and why I didn't want my children to be alone with him. And he was too afraid to do it. You know, all the crazy and another cop he beat up and just like total crazy stuff that he got away with because he's a part of the dark cabal. So their, their ulterior motive was to get me to commit suicide. That was the main thing going on in their brains back in them days and probably still, you know. Some crazy times, but yeah, I've been humble. I've been humble all my life. When you when you know you're born and um, adopted and not really wanted or cared for right out of the beginning, you know, you're humble right from the start. What choice would you have? You know. I mean, to be grateful and humble, that's one thing. But when you're adopted by the dark cabal and they're worthy and you're goyim and you're a slave, it's a whole different world. It's a whole different battle. 
normalcy and um, people used to think, well, the fathers never get the children. Well, yes, they do. They do. Absolutely. Whether it's right or not, because money may indicate a more stable home than somebody that has actual love and saving money. And this is the truth, too. My ex got expunged $80,000 that should have went to my children when I was raising my children. He paid some child support towards the end, um, right before he got custody. Um, my son got one payment. And I bought him tools and a fish tank and some albino clawed African frogs, aquatic frogs, that I ended up having to raise after my kid was taken. But anyway, but, and the oldest one he tried to claim wasn't even his son. And after all that, they still gave him my kids. I still can hardly believe it. You know, somebody that you don't even know if they're going to come home in a night or a month or a week or whatever. There you go. There's some children. Anyway. It's a strange life, but... Yeah, as far as having gratitude in life, I am grateful for a lot of things. That's not one of them. <laughs> that experience, I'll never, never see any good in that, except maybe God was saving me from the turmoil that my children are, like their dad, you know. So that could be, and that's probably closer to the truth. Then I asked myself, why did they even come back? Neither one of them really liked me. You know, like I asked my youngest son, do you like the idea of me or the idea of who you want me to be and who I'm not or what? What? Like, why are you writing me? Why are you even contacting me? You don't even like me, you know? And I honestly don't like my kids. You know, I love certain aspects of them. And I love my sons, but I don't like them as men. They're horrible, you know. Just telling you true. And everybody's different. You know, I might have people that had unsubbed from me for talking about what I'm talking about. If I struck a nerve in them, if you did or said something to your mom, maybe you think she deserved it. And maybe you know what? Maybe she did. In your eyes. Um, I was brutalized and had attempted murders on my life from the people that raised me. And I decided to walk away from them. I didn't bother them. I didn't call them. I didn't seek revenge on them. I walked away. You know, I was offered an island, a two and a half acre island with five buildings on it, the house and a barn and everything, beach all the way around just not to be here with Doug. That kind of, I don't know if that was all a part of the setup too, as far as trying to control my thoughts and my actions in my life. But it could have been all a part of that too. But either way, I gave up my inheritance to move in here because nobody gives me the ultimatum. I thought either with a without Doug, you would you don't do that to me. And I told my dad that, you know, 
happen. You just made up my mind for me. You know. Oh well. <laughs> you know. If I get cut off, I love you all. I'll have one more cigarette with you and I'll try and I think I'll make it through the oh like about a thirty minutes or whatever. And I wonder, too, um, if the magic potion that everybody I'm dealing with outside of my home, if that's affecting their attitudes in life or their health or if they noticed any difference in any of that, I wonder. I really do. Because that's what it's meant for you know, amongst other things, you know, but to actually change a person's molecular structure, you know, to combat diseases. I wonder if that disease is spelled C-H-R-I-S-T. I'm pretty sure it is. I think they want to eliminate that in people's blood. <coughs> what if there were no mothers? Some of us really didn't have that <laughs> nurturing, loving type of, I'll tuck you in, are you cold? You look a little hungry type of woman in our lives, you know. Or maybe just a little bit, you know. But yeah. But what if there weren't? And I think too. There's men out on this planet that need to be bisexual, not bisexual, they need to be gay because they don't deserve a woman in their life. You know, there's a lot of women like that too. When they uh, abuse the men they're with and use them and don't cherish them for the strengths that they do have, I've seen that. Yeah, it does go both ways. That always kind of surprises me, though. I don't know why it should, but it does. I just, I don't see how a woman can act what I think is like a man thing. You know, like I was saying on my last video, um, you know, them, like whatever you eat, can affect you, you know, what your body is. And I was talking about banana flips, you know, they look at, like a pastry, but they're made out of like a sponge cake and they used to have fake banana flavor in there with yellow dye. And it's just like, um, um, or ho-hos and ding-dongs. And I was wondering if people who ate ho-hos, if that made them act like a slut or what, I don't even know if they make these things anymore. I haven't had them for so long, I have no clue, you know, but I'm sure they probably do. I don't know, I have no clue. <laughs> so. So yeah, I'm just kind of winding down. It's like, I don't know, in my life, it's like uh, things will be real smooth for a little while and then something will hit me. When is that ever going to end? Is it ever going to end? Is what I deem to be like more nightmarish ever going to turn into a dream? <laughs> you know, 
please, God, come on. You know? Go do it to, like, sick Satan on the ones who deserves that. Isn't that the time we're in? You know? I think it's time. Well, everybody, I do appreciate you joining me. <laughs> Can't believe that. Now, I'm going to try not to erase this with pushing my buttons and all that stuff, you know. So, all right. Have a really good night or day wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA.